All right, we went through the market overview. All right, we went over the earnings already. Uh, trade ideas that I've got, let me bring up um, TC2000 where I have those. I'm gonna go over some longs first and then some shorts. I finally have got some shorts showing up. Um, SFIX gapped up on earnings, pulled back. This is a pretty decent pullback. Pulling back right through, uh, we sorry, we gapped up right up to the resistance level around 34.65, and then we pulled back. This is going to be a possible retest of the 34 to 35 level. If I drill down to the 60 minute chart, you can see. We got up to this $35 level and then pulled back. I can see a retest of 34 to 35 on Stitch Fix. Um, edit. Edit, I'm looking for a move over 25 and then a retest of the 26.65. It has over uh, almost 16% of the float short. And I've got 32% of the float short in S Fix, is why I. One of the reasons why I think uh, we're going to back up there to retest. Not only do do we normally retest the spike highs. Let's see if we can turn the scans off. Okay. Uh, Yum China. Nice breakout here. Where could it be going to? Well, we could be doing a stair step up. Let's take it one step at a time, but yes, we did get a uh, good breakout on volume and the um, balance of power is showing that uh, people are stepping in. So we've got a, a couple of momentum indicators saying it's a pretty good one there. CA technology kind of zigzagging up and back and down. Uh, looking for it to continue until it doesn't. Now, I'm thinking that we're probably wanting to go to the $51 level or so. And But right now we could go long with a uh, stop under 46.85 with our first, um, first checkpoint around 49 and maybe 50 to 51. Brown Foreman Insurance, uh, sorry, Beverages and Distillers. Uh, over 50.75, where do we go to? 60 minute chart, probably going up into these areas are where they had prior volume, around the 51.50 to 51.60 level. And you can see that gap from here all the way up there, it's gonna look pretty good. Uh, Domo, Domo on Thursday had Earnings, 13% of the float short. I brought this up, primary, not necessarily as much for a uh, trade, as much to show people that after you get the gap up on earnings, watch and see what it does in the following days, it may trickle higher. Um, even, and I, um, I'm not sure what we did on, on Friday with Domo. But de definitely Domo got up to about the 38, 40, 38, 50 level. It was a buy. Uh, MongoDB, also high short interest. Along with Domo, again, high short interest. You can see how 45 degree runners. People ought to say, well, good Lord, it's way too far gone. Now it gapped up. If you have a gap up over consolidation like we did back here, and you have high short interest, it's going to get follow through most of the time. The markets have to be extremely weak for it not to. ACHC, Medical Care, Acadia uh, Health, 14.5% of the float short. If we can get over this $31 level, 31 quarter, I think it runs to 34 and a half. Possible. Um, Trade uh, on an options. Now watch the fact that on a 60 and a 30 minute chart, it started to pull back. We want to make sure that it does the breakout there and not necessarily anticipating the breakout because we're right up there. If we were to be buying right now, Thursday or Friday, we'd be buying at resistance. That is not 
a recipe for success. So we wanted it to prove that we're go it's uh, ready to go higher. Horizon Pharma, again, this is another example, not necessarily a trade, but we went up here on earnings. We did not uh, follow through, does not have high short interest as best I know. It did pull back to approximately the breakout level, maybe a little bit above, and then it started to do its 45 run. I think we're going back up to the $29 level now, but I wanted to show you that don't give up on them just because they pull back. Put it on the back burner and keep looking at it every, one, uh, every day or so. All right, another one that I'm waiting on is Campbell's Soup. It, it did a report of the earnings back here. It's a kind of a slow mover, but, you know, 36 and a quarter to 36.50, 15% of the float is short. I think it wants to go to 37.80 or higher. Yeah, not a big mover. Um, just have to uh, kind of play it by ear. Another long is Apache oil. Some of the oils have been moving. Uh, this one needs to break over 34.50. The big problem I have with that is this congestion area right here is going to probably act as resistance, which is why. We probably have not broken out yet. Once we do, we are going to probably we're probably going to zigzag in this area for a while, and either we will break down or we'll break up and through. Once we break up, we have not clear air, but um, a lot less resistance. I'm letting you see some of the stocks, and you know. People will focus on this 34.50, the breakout, and say, oh, we're going to the moon. Well, maybe not so fast. Maybe you should look to the left. Big, 19% of the float short in the gap. The gap between right here, I'm going to do body to body. That gap, we were basically right about in here. All right, going to move up to that gap at some point. Nice, good, bullish pullback. Watch for a move over about 35 and a half. And initial target would be a, a retest of those highs with a follow-on target up here in the 40s. Last of the longs that I have tonight is Stericycle. A little late in the game here for us to be uh, jumping on board here. But what we did is we gapped up, gapped up to resistance, pulled back. Pulled back to the breakout level, and then curled back up. Uh, again, zigzag or J-hook pattern. Move up, pull back, curl back up. The ideal place to go long is somewhere in this neighborhood with a stop somewhere below the recent lows with our first target, a re, uh, retest of the swing high there, and another ultimate target above that. And the ultimate target on that one would possibly be somewhere in the 53 to 54 dollar range. All right, I did promise that we had some shorts tonight. I don't always have a lot of shorts, but I have a few here tonight. I'm gonna to go over them rather quickly. And what I like to see on shorts is either a break of a an obvious Support level like AER deer here around 45. Once it did that and it got too far extended, I have to wait for a reversion to the mean bounce and then for it to roll over and below 4275 to 4250, I think we have a chance to go retest the $41 level. Now, the volume up on, let's see, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday of last week. Gives me a little bit of pause that this one might not, might not want to go all the way back there. ARWR. Uh, I, I brought this up not as necessarily for a short, but to bring up a learning point. Excuse me, I'm, I'm having trouble with <clears throat> my throat today. Now, we were in a good solid uptrend for almost 
uh, the good part of a month here. And then we did a, uh, a pullback and then a move back up. I want to show you a couple things that's happening here. One, I don't short anything that's in an uptrend like they were. We curled back down and we made a lower high. So the definition of an uptrend is higher highs and higher lows. We made a higher high and a higher low. Higher high, higher low. Higher high. Oh, wait a minute. We've got lower lows here. We have an equal high, or actually a lower high when you compare it to there. And now if we make another low below that, this one could be a short. It's not a short now. What it is right now, though, for me, is anybody who's long ARWR, it has a sell signal. A sell is not permission to go short in my trading rules. My trading rules have that if I'm in an uptrend, which this definitely is, I don't go short until I see it breaking and establishing a downtrend, which it's close to doing, but it will not do that until it breaks 17 and a half. So it has to be in a downtrend. We could just be chopping along here. And I don't want to get caught in that and being short. All right. Raytheon. Raytheon was in long, tried to curl back up. And this is, again, lower highs, lower lows. If it breaks 177.5, I have no idea where it goes, but it's going lower. I don't know how far it's going to go, but I'm watching that one. I've got... I've got it all queued up on the options to go short on Raytheon. FlowServe, same thing. We were in an uptrend for the longest time. About the middle end of February, we had a what could have been a pullback, but it's turned out to be a very deep pullback, then a bounce, kind of a reversion to the mean. And we're at the inflection point. And as Yogi Berra used to say, if you come to the fork of the road, take it. Well, we could either now curl back up to go higher, or we could roll over to go lower. And what I'm needing for it to do there is to go up above that, or to break down. And the target would be somewhere around 42 and a half. AAA, Alcoa. Alcoa, if it opens uh, lower on Monday, probably below the volatility dot or something like that, around 27.50, it'd be a short candidate to run to at least 27, maybe lower. We are potentially set up for a zigzag J hook to the downside. Clear. Same thing. Good solid uptrend until the end of February. We've had some minor bounces. Now this would be pretty tough. If somebody went short, you're going to have to watch for 49.30 or 49.40 as a possible bounce area. But if the markets start to get weak, it could easily go down to the 50 moving average or even lower. Price level support is probably not down to about 47. Now, some of these shorts will be, because of the market still pointing upwards, could be very aggressive. Bank of Nova Scotia, again, I'm looking at the same thing here. Rolling over the top, change in direction. How can I uh, confirm that? I do an EMA only chart. It's an 8 to 17 exponentials. The blue line's the 8, the, the uh, magenta line's the 17. When, by definition, if the 8 is over the 17, we're in an uptrend. And if it's below, we're in a downtrend. We are bottoming out. So we're potentially at the, at the flex point to go up or to go down. 
those are actually where I like to uh, see the stock. That way I know whether, whichever way it goes, I have a very tight stop. If I want to go short, I have a tight stop up here around 55. If I wanted to go long, which I would not based upon the fact that it has some, uh, I'll call it congestion over here to the left at 55 half. If I were to go long, ignoring that, you're talking 54.50. So I've got good tight stops, but I have to have a good reward to risk ratio. In this case, long I do not, short I do. ANTM. I'm not sure if you're aware, but healthcare has been being hit with a lot of rumors uh, flying around with the uh, Democratic part of Congress, you know, uh, trying to play, uh, I uh, say play games, but what they do is they're trying to change the, the playing field for the uh, drug companies about getting rebates and stuff like that. Uh, whether that's right, wrong, or indifferent, I'm, I'm not making a call there. What I am doing is that saying this, that the outlook on healthcare plans uh, has deteriorated. And you can see how the balance of power at Antum was positive, and now it's turned red negative on Bob balance of power. Move up. Now we're in a downtrend. We bounced. I could see us easily going to 292. Um, again, probably only going to be able to play that with the options, at least in my book. That's true. Archer Daniel Mid Midland. A uh, little bit of a hefty bounce here, but if we can do a good uh, solid rollover, going through about 42.70 would be the first checkpoint, and then down to about 42. Cardinal Health, another healthcare a medical distribution system. We basically have a J hook to the downside setting up. Um, in our day trading room, we actually set up a, a day trade here on this candle right here, and then kept some for a swing, and played it all the way down to about I think we played it down to about 48. We left a little on the table, but not bad. And it looks like it's setting up for another short. And what I do uh, for day trades is I go out there and I will look at for good daily setups and then I drill down. C and C, same thing. Down move, healthcare again, bounce, reversion of the mean, Looks like anything under about 59 goes down and retests 56. Aerospace and defense. Knock. If it go, if it went down below 271 on Friday, 271.50, if we break it again and keep going on Monday, we'll probably go on the short side. And probably for a swing. CVS, another health care plan. Hefty sell-off. Did not participate in that one. Bounce. And this one, because it's so long, I don't know whether uh, it will break to do lows, but maybe a retest of that low would be in the cards. And the last one's also uh, healthcare, Humana. You can, you can detect a theme here. Good solid down, down run, even though we had a zigzag. Uh, um, bounce along the way. This one is right on the cusp. If it goes higher, it will come off. If it breaks above 284.50, it's no longer in my uh, idea short. If it breaks under, say, 278.50, definitely consider a short with a stop above 284. All right. All right, I'm going to open up for general questions. That is not stocks. That's a general uh, question. And I'm going to go over here. I was ignoring everybody, I think, over here. And I, I apologize, but that's what I have to do to be able to stay on track. How long does short interest, um, uh, does short covering move last? That is hard to judge. What I use is the Stochastics um, RSI. To help me judge the momentum and I watch price and the stochastics and when when they get up 
and boats start to roll over, then that means that this part of the move is over. If somebody has 15 to 30 percent short interest and has a very substantial float, meaning millions of shares, it's probably going to take weeks to burn that off. And what's going to happen is you'll get a zigzag up and down. You'll get a rally up, pull back, rally up, pull back. Okay, I hope that helps, Win. Coach B, are any of the LTA scans you helped to find the short-term trades? Absolutely. Um, I, let's see, what was the last one? I actually believe that Cardinal Health was originally, uh, that short was initially identified. What I have on my long uh, LTA scanner, um, I have that I look at five minute highs and lows, and I look at two day highs and two day lows. And um, I find that both of them bring up very, very good candidates. Now, just because it shows up on those scans doesn't mean it's a good short immediately or a good long. I do have to still obviously qualify them myself. But yes, I find that it does a great job of pointing out the stuff. Now, do I start the day looking at the scanner? No. I will go look at my earnings and my other stocks uh, that I've got already identified. But as soon as I don't see anything there, I will go look at the LTA scanner. I do have the LTA scanner set up. Let me show you what I... Okay, I'm going to show you in the upper right hand corner here once it comes up. Now, we're not going to get any scans because the markets are not open. But what I'll do is I'll have the five minute bull and bear case uh, J hooks over here. I have the five minute highs and lows of the S&P 500 to be able to judge how the markets are moving. And then the two day highs and two day lows to also judge how the markets are going. But I normally start on these top two and the left two here. And I use these as another momentum indicator. Those are up all the time. So anybody who's in the room can look over the shoulder for the LTA scans, but they're only my scans. The LTA scans, there's there's tons of them. Maybe ones that you would be better. Uh, if you haven't uh, attended a uh, webinar on what the capabilities are, I suggest that you do. Um, I used to pay over $300 a month for a scanner that I thought was pretty good, but it has absolutely absolutely does not compare to this one as far as uh, the capabilities and the price. Okay, uh, let's go here. Uh, Jeff S. Um, are these day trades? No, the ones that I've just shown out there are, are good daily setups. They could be either a day trade if you wanted to make it that, or it could be a swing trade. To me, a good day trade has to have a good daily chart. Because if it doesn't have a good daily chart in the direction you want to go, you're going to be fighting the system. You're going to be swimming upstream, swimming against the current, up or down. If you're trying to go long and, it th and things are going south, you're not going to make a whole lot of uh, money. Even if the five minute or two minute chart looks good, if the hourly and daily look bad, you're going to have a tough time making money on the long side. So I start with a daily chart and then drill down and watch those. Now let's look at a drill down. I was asked to do that. Um, all right. What do I mean by a drill down? One of the things is I have a split view. If I'm out here and I'm looking at uh, stocks, what I'm going to do is if, if I'm going, if I'm looking at something that, that appears on the um, on the scanner, and it shows as popping up 
So let's say that it popped up as a, uh, uh, let's say high Q's not a good one. O3 dash. Okay. What we had is Ulta on Friday. ULTA. It was, <laughs> it was just wild at the beginning of the day. This is a five-minute chart on Ulta. And it opened and it went sideways and then it started to creep higher. Notice how it went from an open of three, uh, three, uh, what? 328 to 338, a $10 move. Well, most of it was a grind. And it might have been very difficult to try to trade that. But this is what I do as I look on at Avgo. All right. Avgo is probably a good example. A much better example. Where did it open? It did a high wave doji on a 5 around 265. What did it have over here? Uh, somewhere around the 285 to 286 level, anything above that should be kind of a long, and it, sure enough, it held above this 264, March 11th. Why is this say March 11th? There's March the 15th. Okay. All right. So right in here, about 288, which would have been right about in this 286 or higher. It went as low as 283.50. 283.50 was about where it retested the support. There's 283.41. And then it started to grind higher. Where was all the money made on Avgo? It closed at 290.29. It got as high as 300. All the money was made early in the day. There's the high for 300, and it closed at 290. That time right there is before 11 o'clock. And most of that money was made in the first 15 minutes. For those who say they're going to sit on the sidelines and let the markets do what they want to do for the first half hour, if you're an extremely short-term trader like me, you're letting most of the profits get away from you. You're in actually increasing your risk by doing that. Now, if you're a swing trader, that may not be a bad idea. I still believe that you should be trading at the 5, 10, or 15 minute point and not waiting for half an hour to go by. Would it not have been a pretty nice swing entry over the 5 minute of two, uh, 289 and let it go? So you now it would have been about 290. Okay. Maybe you took some off the table. There's another thing you can, that you can do, and I do this quite often. I'll take a day trade and I'll take a number of shares. In this case, it probably wouldn't have happened because of the cost of it. But let's just say I had a, a stock and I was able to, to buy 400 or 600 shares using my risk to, to reward ratio. If during the day I peel off 400 shares, I could hold on to 100 or 200 shares at the end of the day for a swing. I can do a day trade to a swing trade. If I still like the chart, I have to tell myself though that I have different parameters. I have different stop levels. I have different risk levels. I have different, um, I have to give it a little bit more room, which means I will have to have fewer shares. I can't hang on to 600 shares if I had the correct reward to risk ratio before for a day trade. I probably can't hang on to all 600 shares as a swing. All right, that kind of got off the point just a little bit. Uh, Jeff S., that's kind of how I do the drill down. Uh, 
All right, Bob S. wants me to go, how do I enter? I usually enter on, if it's an earning stock or whatever, I'm probably going to enter on a two-minute chart or three-minute chart. I try to let it go two to three minutes into the day. Let me bring up. All right, let's go here. Let's go to Avgo. Let's go to a five minute chart. Whoops, I need to go one day five. We don't have any trades. All right, opening day there, let me go to a one day three. One day three. All right. Notice how it gapped up to 286 and a half and pulled back, then immediately broke above it on the next three minute candle. I use a two or three minute, sometimes I'll use a one minute, I'll use one minute candles so I can judge it. So let's go um, time frame setup, time frame. One minute. Yeah, it's going to get pretty tight there. But what by using a one minute chart, I'm not trading off the one. I'm trying to aggregate it. I'm trying to make this thing uh, go higher or lower on a two or three minute basis. But I will drill down and use a one minute chart until it gets in there a little bit. And on my think or swim, sorry, on my TC two thousand. Um, version 12 that I use there. Um, I have a button. I have a tab. All I had to go over is to the two minute tab. Well, there's the first two minute. When it gets above there, it's time for us to go long. Now, with the $286 chart, uh, stock, you either got to have a lot of money and capital and tie, it, tie most of it up. You don't have all of it at risk, but you do have a significant amount, 280, so 283.50 from um, 87. So you're talking about three and a half bucks per share. Probably going to do options. And they're going to be pretty tough. They're going to be swinging. I believe it was with Avgo and it did that big turnaround. I made the entry just as it went above the 287 level. I actually hit the button to buy and it ran away from me and I did not get filled. It made me sick, but I didn't get filled. All right. And that's the problem with trading options. But it is what it is. I didn't chase it. I did not chase it at all. Ulta was uh, even worse. You know, this one did the doji. There's a two-minute chart. Um, I know I definitely tried to put in a buy there, and it just ran like a scalded dog. Ran all the way up here to 345 or so from under 330. Made me sick. All right, um, let's go. Um, hope you, that helps Bob, obviously, in the room. Ask again. Uh, ZD wants to know where I get uh, short interest. Well, there's two ways. Finviz or short squeeze. And let's move this out of the way. Let's go to Top Gun. And you see right here, I've got short squeeze. And if I want to find out with MongoDB what its float short is, 
and I use the percentage of the float. I don't use the number of days like they used to do in the old days. We now know the percentage of floats important. It has over 22%. That's 22% as of the day of this, this information, which could be anywhere from two to three weeks old. So I have to look at the chart uh, for MDB and realize that after this uh, jump up here with two days worth of mo motion and above average volume, it's probably not 22% anymore. However, it's probably well in excess of 10, which still makes it a good candidate for a short squeeze. The other one is Finviz. And if I have a list of stocks here, uh, ABGO, uh, Ulta, and then I have those. those are, that's my list. I filtered them out. And I look at the float short here under ownership. And MDB is high, but the other two are not. Okay. Right, I, I think I answered that question. It's anywhere of two to four weeks, basically, David. Uh, if you bought at the 3A trap, when do you sell? Uh, if mean Reggie, that would be more, well, first of all, I don't use moving average crossovers. Not at all. Um, and I know that in the past, I've used things like a 3-8 trap to identify a candidate, but price is where I go after I, I use these as kind of scans to try to find possible setups. I find candidates. So if I were to go look over here under personal and all my stocks and ETFs, and I've got a tradable stocks because I've got them day trades ten dollars or more no no cheapies 70 45 or higher on average daily volume that's much higher than what i use for earnings scans and 50 cents atr and i scan them and it leaves me with 935 stocks instead of 1509 i have 1509 in my total universe of which tradable is only 935 that meet that criteria. Okay, so what I do is I'll look for setups. Well, this one is my idea of a J-hook or zigzag scan. I can share that with you guys if you want, uh, but right now I'm gonna press on. Uh, and then I go down here and look and see, okay, yeah, this one's curling back up, but the curl back up is not, is what identified this to me, but what I'm really interested in is a break above about 25. Accenture, eh, this is kind of a, a move up, but it's already gone. What I wanted to do was to get it back down here, 162. Stars, now this is looking like kind of a J hook with a retest of maybe a 49. Disney, no. K-Web, no. Then I'm just basically stepping through them. And then I go over here and I highlight with a flag those that I like. And then at the end, I've got my list to watch live. Uh, how do I approach the float value? RC wants to know, how do I approach the float value? I'm not sure what you mean. I think maybe you're saying is, how do I use it? To me, 10% or higher and breaking above a prior resistance level, what would we do? If this has high float short, we've now had a big, big gap change here on SVIX. I'm surprised it actually didn't run. Um, let's see, where on Domo. Domo had a move up, then it went down and kind of consolidated. We did a kind of a reversal gap, 13% float. Now maybe only 
11 or 10. Good candidate for a resumption of the uptrend. In fact, if I were to take this trend right there and extend it, that's what we're doing. We are in danger of getting a little bit extended though. MongoDB exceeded its prior, but what it had been doing before, it went up and then it consolidated. Consolidated in a box. It broke out above this consolidation of 110. What was the other way we were looking at? Avgo? It broke above prior swing levels. And it held. And that's why I need to look at the daily as well as the five minute chart when I'm day trading. I have to know where those daily support and resistance levels are. Mark them on the map. And this one should actually show up. And there it is. So I mark it here and then Five or three minute chart, go, go look at it and trade off of it. Okay. Uh, what do you use to trade crude oil? Or we use the futures. Um, I use uh, slash CL. Uh, some people will use USO. I don't like that one because of the lack of real movement. You know, we're, we're not talking about pennies. UWT uh, moves a little bit more, but if you don't use the futures, it's kind of tough to trade that. Casey wants to know, what other method do I use to see the uh, pre-market volume on different stocks? I know we're using up all our volume uh, and our time to talk about this, but I think this is as important or maybe even more so than um, what the setups are. All right. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you quickly what my charts, what my screen setup is like in the morning. Now remember, I'm gonna bring up the LTA, let's see if it's on there. Okay, you're going to see the spiders here, or in this case, a lot of times I'll have up the S&P futures, and we'll be watching that, not necessarily trading, but I'm calling everything off of it, and the spider's going to follow along. But the, the spider, the uh, S&P, I'm going to get good data overnight and pre-market. And see, I'll be able to follow this, and I follow it on a five-minute and a 15 minute chart. Then I've got here two charts where I have, let me try the one day five. I have a five minute chart and then a daily so we can monitor the split. So that we know where we are And so I can watch this as we go along and we know where support and resistance are on the daily or even an hourly chart if I want to do that or a weekly chart. And then once I know where that is, I can go directly to my trading chart. And my trading chart could be three minute chart for usually for 
earnings, a five minute for non earnings or later in the day. And that's what I've got. And then if, uh, if I've made my trades here and uh, we've already made our money on Avgo, couldn't find any others on our uh, watch list, either earnings or uh, the watch list that we created that we showed you a minute ago. There's where I start picking up stuff from the LTA scanner. And occasionally people will see that and they'll type it into our room. All right, so that's kind of how we did it. Uh, SP, I do not like to use a um, five minute chart to trade. It's too, day trade, it is too, um, it's too slow. It does not, uh, in my mind, it does not help second let me get the time frame on this one let me show you something okay trying to get something set up here. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to confuse you by showing you something before I'm ready to explain it. All right. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to show you that. We're going to get, a, if I open up Okay, I'm gonna let you guys know. I use Unirinko, Rinko charts, range charts, to trade. They are based upon price, price action. They are not time-based. We ha we'll have a whole sort, um, I believe, uh, let me go out to the Top Gun website. All right, what I wanna do here is I want you, there's an hour and 23 minutes of this presentation. It's free for everyone. That will talk to you about all of my charts, trading patterns and setups. In there, I also talk about range charts, um, Rinko charts and the like, and, and what the advantages and disadvantages of each of those are. I tend to try to trade those on the big fast movers because the five minute chart is going to be too long. It's, and in fact, you're not going to be able to see, uh, you'll, you'll see a lot of noise. And go ahead and look at this. Um, and if you have any other que any questions, Try to fire them off to me, maybe as a, um, if you have questions and you want to post a, a comment on the um, Member Z Learning, I will get notification and I'll answer you. But better yet, sign up or sign up for a trial and come on in the room. TS wants to know, which is better to trade, stocks or futures? Whichever one makes money for you. I'm not trying to be a smart ass or what. Some people um, can't psychologically handle uh, futures because it's very fast. And if you try to do it on a slower basis, you could lose a lot of money in a hurry. Um, the good part about futures is that you don't have to go looking around for socks and scan. You've got basically three or four that you're looking at at any one day. Um, and you, the other pro to that is that you probably only need five to seven thousand uh, dollars in your account to start. But it takes a bit of time to get up to speed to learn. Now, I would say that if you're going to day trade, 
you probably if you would use uh, minute charts instead of uh, um, instead of price based charts you probably ought to be on a three minute chart or higher three minutes at the beginning of the day then to a five minute chart then to a 15 minute chart the reason I say that is that you want don't get don't want to get to the one to two minute because you'll see all the noise it'll bounce all over the place and you'll basically get yourself freaked out and at a three minute it takes some of the noise out and you can try to get along with a little trend like did at Avgo. Uh, as it gets 30 minutes into the day, you probably want to look at a five or a 15 minute chart. So you're knowing where the big tra trends are. You may not be able to trade that, but you at least need to be looking at it. And obviously if you're doing swing trades, there are other, um, I use daily and 30 slash 60 minute charts. I watch the 30 and 60 minute charts on swing trades because that will give me the the biggest heads up that we're getting a change of character the first heads up okay um teal blue behind the candles okay you're talking about um are you still with me that roseanne you're talking about these skyscrapers sitting on their side uh, thanks, Ed. Um, skyscraper sitting on their side. That's volume at price. Let me show you how you do this. Edit studies. It's a volume profile, according to Thinkorswim. And I leave everything pretty much the same. Except two. One. I change the op opacity to 20 so that it stays in the background, but it's enough. And the other thing is on expansion needs to be no instead of yes. If you have it as yes, it goes on the far right hand side and you have to then eyeball where these are. I overlap them and put them in the background so that I look through the price candles to look at where the volumes are occurring and with especially let's look at especially with the futures you will go from plateau to plateau you'll jump from skyscraper to skyscraper and On the monthlies and the dailies, sorry, the dailies and the hourlies, they follow to these almost to the letter. When I see a price level form where there's a lot of volume, that shows me that there's a lot of strength there. There's a lot of buyers and sellers. Um... Do I have any use for tick charts, RC says. Um, I used to trade a 377 tick chart. And I'm, since I'm a price guy, I found that range, uh, range bars work better for me because you will move between uh, swing levels but you could also use swing levels on an hourly chart. You could use it on a 30-minute chart. You could use it on just about any chart you wanted to. So, um, yes, you could use tick charts. I've gone away from them. Uh, what do I have of settings Karen wants to know on my Rinko bars? Well, therein lies the problem with range bars. When you when I was uh, trading them on the futures, I had settings for the ES, the NQ, the YM, the RTY, and the CL. So whichever of the the crude oil, the Russell, um, the Dow, S and P, um, and, and the Nasdaq. Whichever one there, I had certain settings for them because they tended to move um, pretty much 
the same every day. A, a range bar would be good. Like on the S and P, it was a three seven. Well, the problem is with stocks; they're all new. They're all new every day, and I'm I basically use a three. Uh, what I don't have up is my. You're gonna force me to bring something up. I'm all that's fine. I'll, I'll be happy to to talk about it. I wasn't prepared, but let's go to where you guys are. You're driving this. This is um, really for you guys. don't know that because I've closed it all right all right because I've closed it my ninja trader does not have the Unirinko bars okay but here's what I use as setting is I use a three Unirinko with a seven, and what it does, it uses the range of three and a reversal of seven. So it doesn't really call a reversal until we uh, have reversed back down seven, seven of the ticks that you've got. Um, this is getting a bit complicated. Go look at the um, YouTube video that I posted up there. It'll do a better job of showing you and explaining. We're not going to be able to. It's already 9.15. We're not going to be able to do that tonight. But because um, I don't have the charts set up that way right now. I do apologize, but I don't. Uh, where do we sign up for the trial? You got it, you got it, you got it. Uh, RC, I will use the volume at price levels. They are good levels for targets. They're good levels for stops. They're good levels for entries. All the above. Now, because we're, we're trading here on Sunday night, some of the, and, and um, late in the day on Friday, a lot of the volume, most of the volumes down in here, uh, either the volumes work really well on three in the six months charts, and they'll go from volume level to volume level, or they work really well on the intraday down low. Um, I use 3.7, but I use Unirinko and OM, which um, which program do you use it on? I'm, I'm using NinjaTrader and Unirinko versus Thinkorswim is just the Rinko bars. Okay. And if you join the room, even on a trial basis, I'll be happy to share with you all of the uh, settings that I've got for mine. Um, and, you know, have a free session with you to talk about how I've got my uh, um, trader set up. Okay. Any other general questions? I do apologize. In 9.15, my voice was already bad to start with. I am going to have to skip the um, individual stocks tonight. I do apologize. Do I trade the ES? Yes, occasionally. But what I'm normally, been, I've been asked to focus on uh, stocks, but I'll trade NQ, uh, ES, and uh, RTY. And then some people will follow along with spiders. 
The problem is with spiders and the ETFs, um, they may or may not move enough for you to make money unless you have extremely um, low commissions. But I am going to, I do keep the, uh, the futures up during the day. Right. I think you're probably right there. Uh, and some people will just trade, like, people could have easily traded um, the spiders or the SPX and maybe even options on, on the spiders. They'll, they'll play those, they'll play the, the trend. They'll wait till we get up here on this 15 or 5 minute where we get up here, we actually do it a rollover, and then they'll go short, maybe the break of 20, what did we do? We broke 28, 25, they would have gone short there and pick up a point. Now, Sunday night, when's the best time to trade? With the futures, probably when Japan opens around 8 to 9.30 or something like that, maybe to 10, but 8, 8 and 10. The best time possibly to trade futures, which I cannot do, is to get up at 2 o'clock in the morning when Germany wakes up and trade through about 4 or 5 when the UK opens. It trades a whole lot better. You don't have a bunch of um, tweets or anything else uh, messing you about, and it does tend to trend quite well uh, quite well but I, I tried doing that for about three months and I'm not able to sleep during the day because I've got dogs that bark like crazy and I won't I, it was burning me out all right I am gonna have to go I'm losing my voice again um, I'll post the recording up later and you guys have a good one and uh, feel free let's see we've got one other thing here here's the sign up if you wanted to go straight you can go to a trial for me or you can go straight to uh, there and look at memberships in hit and run candlesticks Rick in the stocks he does a, an absolutely fantastic job there. Right way options. Doug is probably the best options trader that I have ever met in my life. And I think I do an excellent job trading earnings and gaps. All right. You guys take care and uh, come on and join us and say hello. Aloha.